I'm going to share with you 10 things that I wish I knew before I started watercolours. And I'd like to thank Laurie from my Patreon membership for inspiring this tutorial. Let's get started. And while I discuss that, I'm also going to be demonstrating this step-by-step -step watercolour tutorial of a beautiful bird of paradise flower. And this is part of my sketchbook flower painting challenge. I've mixed up some Indian yellow, Indian yellow plus a little bit of red and then a little bit more red in the top little palette there. I'm painting using my size 8 brush working wet on dry, starting off with the yellow, dropping in the sort of yellow orange and then more of the red orange, keeping everything really simple. The first thing I wish I knew was to allow my painting to dry in between stages. I just kept painting and things got muddier and I got lots of cauliflowers. So allow your painting to dry in between stages. As you saw there, I rinsed my brush. I'm just pushing up some water there just to make the bottom part of this petal a little bit lighter. And I'm adding a little bit of lemon yellow in there, wet into wet. I'm mixing up a slightly thicker paint here. It's the red orange, so it's red first with a bit of yellow with my size eight brush working damp into damp and using a clean damp brush to blend that red orange. As you saw there, I'm using a paper towel to take off the excess paint there. It controls the amount of moisture on my brush so I don't get wet paint going into drying paint on my paper there, so it prevents cauliflowers. So use a paper towel to get rid of all, any excess and you will feel a little bit more in control of your watercolour painting. The second thing I wish I knew was to load and glide my brush. Really load your brush with paint, especially at the beginning stages when you're painting washes and glide it gently across the paper. Don't scrub it. Sometimes if you use a little bit of paint and scrub your brush along the paper, it disturbs the paint underneath. Watercolour is not permanent, so you will disturb the paint underneath, creating cauliflowers and mud. So tip number two is always try to load and glide your brush gently across your watercolour painting. As you can see there, I'm still using my size 8 brush still using really just two colours, the yellow and the red, sort of painting the yellow, then adding the orange and then the red orange there. And I've added some water and pushed the water up at the bottom of the petals there to create lighter areas. So I'm starting again using some yellow there painting wet on dry. I'm just lifting off a little bit of my paper towel there. It's another way you can actually make another uh, make an area in a watercolour painting a little bit lighter. I'm going on now with the orange there with my size 8 brush, working damp into damp. Tip number three is to use soft hair brushes. These can be natural or synthetic, but you don't want to use hog hair brushes or very stiff brushes because again, it will disturb the paint underneath creating muddiness and tidal marks. As you can see there, I've used a little bit of red now and I'm blending it with a clean damp brush into the orange paint there. And it's quite an exciting sort of painting this. I love this flower and it's really a pleasure to paint it in this sketchbook here for the sketchbook challenge. The fourth thing I wish I knew was to try to use cotton paper as much as I can. What I found is it doesn't dry as fast as other papers and it also lends itself so beautifully to watercolour painting. And for beginners it's especially useful because it doesn't dry as quickly so it gives you more time to paint washes and you can use the back of the paper for practice as well. I produce some of the best watercolour paintings on the back of paper. I think there's less pressure. So as you can see here, I'm using the yellow, then the orange, and painting this large petal here, quite pointy petal to sort of the left, pointing to the left. I've added a touch of pink here to the right-hand side of the petal and diluting it just below. Adding a little bit of red-orange now, damp into damp, using my size 8 brush blending that. Now I'm using a little bit of lemon yellow with a bit of phthalo cyanine blue. You can use Prussian blue or even cerulean painting this limey light green colour just below the orange here, barely touching it, rinsing my brush, 
taking the excess water off on the paper towel and then blending to sort of dilute to pale this color and give it a soft edge as well. I've added a little bit more of the phthalo cyanine blue here and I'm sort of pushing it into that damp limey green paint still using my size 8 brush so it's a real blue green color here painting this wet on dry rinsing my brush and then just using that wet brush now to dilute that sort of blue green paint bringing it down to the stem there on the right hand side and then lifting off some of the paint with my paper towel where it is a little bit lighter using a slightly creamier paint here that's the phthalo cyanine blue mixed with some hooker's green thicker paint and just painting this damp into damp to create some shadow color just underneath the petal there. I'm adding a little bit more yellow here, the Indian yellow painting wet on dry, again rinsing my brush, taking the excess off and then diluting and blending that yellow paint into the blue green petal using my size 8 clean damp brush there. I'm using a little bit of the green and red now painting damp into damp with my size 8 brush so it makes a sort of a greeny reddy brown colour depending on how much red or green you add but it's just for this dark here on the flower I'm adding a little bit more of crimson here taking the excess off I want a really sharp dark sort of warm red brown colour working damp into damp for this little bit of detail here as this where the stem sort of starts these markings on the flower here are quite gorgeous and it sort of brings the flower to life as well and that brings me to my fifth thing I wish someone had told me and that I knew and it was try not to lose the light in the painting that's all I think about now so I'm diluting and paling and, and sort of softening edges there but lifting off with my paper towel you can reserve with masking fluid but you have to keep the light because we don't usually use white paint in watercolor you do in oils and acrylics and gouache but not in watercolor it's the white of the paper or the light washes what you don't want to do when you sort of proceed seed and paint dry your painting and paint the next wash don't paint over your light keep that light it's one of the most important things in watercolor so as you can see here I've added some yellow then limey green and again that lovely sort of blue green color using the phthalo cyanine blue with a touch of yellow there and just working my way down adding a little bit of the hooker's green as well damp into damp and then adding the green and the red again mixed together to paint paint a dark brown colour you can use burnt umber painting this damp into damp and then blending there with some limey green so I've mixed up some ultramarine and some pink here and I'm painting wet on dry um, these marks up here using my size 4 brush now and again using water water is my friend here and I'm just diluting and paling so I don't lose my light and I'm just adding a little bit more dark here just between the petals I've added of mixed together some of the red and green. It's so important to practice watercolour because it's such a wet medium and difficult to control. So I kind of wish someone had said to me, just keep practicing, don't lose your confidence. Um, and try and practice every day. Paint a sky every day. That really does teach you about blending watercolour, mixing colours, and it is so much fun to do. As you can see here, I'm sort of using violets and pinks here, just dropping them in and painting this detail here with my size 4 brush, working wet on dry, and then adding creamier, thicker colours, so you get some darks here as well, next to my lighter colours. When I first started to paint, I never planned my pictures. I think it's very important to plan your watercolour painting. You know, what colours you're going to use, you know, what stages, where your light is, the composition, everything. It's so important. It will give you confidence. No matter how simple the painting is, try to plan it beforehand. You will really find that so helpful. So I'm building up here my mid-tones, sort of working wet on dry and then blending, using mostly more of the red-orange here and there. Try 
trying to really reserve those lighter areas. Remember that's so important. So that's another mid-tone here, mid-tone on the green, wet on dry, and then you can soften some of those hard edges with a clean damp brush. Just using some ultramarine here with some pink, painting wet on dry. Number eight, the thing I wish I knew before I started watercolor painting is less really is more. I tell this to my students all the time. So try not to overwork your watercolors. Keep them nice and fresh. As you saw, I'm just painting some darks and details to finish off this painting using my size eight brush, using a little bit of violet, burnt sienna, touch of the green and the other darks left in my palette. And I'm gonna leave it there for now by signing and dating my painting to stop me doing any more work. So my tip that I wish I knew before I started in watercolor painting was to stop before I finish because sometimes I was finished, but I couldn't see it and I kept working away and I ended up losing the light in my picture. So if you can stop before you finish, maybe look at it the next day or the day after, you'll probably see that or you can see what you need to do without overworking it. It's one of the most important things I've learnt in watercolour painting. So here is the finished painting. I actually didn't do any more to it and it's just my point about not overworking your painting. But if you do, my tip that I wish I knew when I started out painting in watercolour is don't be too hard on yourself. This is all practice. You're learning. You're a student of watercolour. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful with these tips that I wish I knew when I first started out watercolour painting. And I really hope this tutorial inspires you to have a go at painting this bird of paradise flower. If you have any tips that you'd like to share, please put those in the comments section below. And if you have any questions, please put those in the comments section below. If you like this content and you'd like to see more like it, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel where you'll get updates of my latest tutorials. And if you'd like to support my YouTube channel and watch exclusive videos and learn more about watercolour painting, why not think about joining my Patreon membership? Details about that can be found in the description below. Thank you so much for watching. Happy painting. Bye for now.